The Hubble Space Telescope has been silently hovering above Earth for over 30 years, but it's still returning spectacular images of the cosmos. That's an amazing technological achievement, but it wasn't always a smooth ride. By now, the story is a well-known one around the scientific community, despite a Herculean effort to test Hubble before launch, an imperfection in the main mirror caused the resulting images to come out blurry. A NASA service mission was sent in 1993 to fix Hubble with a new camera, and it's been sending back beautiful images ever since. This was only the first of five manned service missions to Hubble, which have delivered new equipment and instruments, and taken care of less urgent issues over the years. In our video today, we are going to look at some of the best pictures ever taken by the Hubble telescope. Most of the famous Hubble images were taken with the Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2 and the Wide Field Camera 3. Wide Field and Planetary Camera 2 was the replacement installed on that first service mission, and that camera was then replaced with the Wide Field Camera 3 during the final Hubble service mission in 2009. We're not talking about your phone camera here, these are some of the most advanced image technologies humans have ever created. This camera 3 has even greater optical resolution. Some images were also taken with the advanced camera for surveys, which replaced the original faint object camera in 2002. Since it's outside Earth's murky atmosphere, the Hubble Space Telescope can see farther and more clearly than any astronomical instrument before. Every year on its anniversary, the Hubble team release a new special anniversary image to toast another birthday. From colourful nebulas to interacting galaxies, it's hard to choose a favourite, but here are some of the best. The Butterfly Nebula The Butterfly Nebula is a bipolar planetary nebula located in Scorpius. It lies at a distance of 3,800 light-years from Earth. Named for its resemblance to a butterfly, the nebula has a wingspan that stretches across three light years. It is sometimes also called the Bug Nebula. The Butterfly Nebula is one of the most complex structures ever seen in a planetary nebula. A dying central star is one of the hottest known stars in the galaxy. We're not talking about the front page of TMZ here. It has a surface temperature of around 222,204 degrees centigrade and is hidden from view by dust clouds, but shines brightly in ultraviolet wavelengths. The gas in the nebula moves very quickly across space at over 600,000 miles per hour. The star at the centre of the nebula is a white dwarf with an estimated mass of about 0.64 solar masses. It has a dense disk of dust and gas surrounding it at the equator, which is believed to have caused the star's outflow of material to form the bipolar butterfly shape, resembling an hourglass. The Tadpole Galaxy The Tadpole Galaxy is one of the furthest galaxies we have seen, and we're sure you'll agree it is slightly more beautiful than an actual tadpole. It is the result of two colliding galaxies that took place millions of years ago. When the galaxies collided, the weaker galaxy was destroyed, and hence why the galaxy has a tail. Stars from the galaxy were thrown out onto the tail. Eventually, over time, the tail will disappear, and those stars in it will become rogue stars. The tail of the galaxy stretches out for more than 280,000 light years and features massive bright blue star clusters. The Ring Nebula M57, or the Ring Nebula, is a planetary nebula, the glowing remains of a sun like star. The tiny white dot in the center of the nebula is the star's hot core, called a white dwarf. M57 is about 2,000 light years away in the constellation Lyra, and is best observed during August for all you summer stargazing fans. Discovered by French astronomer Antoine d'Arquier de Pelpois in 1779, the Ring Nebula has an apparent magnitude of 8.8 .8 and can be spotted with moderately sized telescopes. The Hubble high-resolution image helped astronomers determine that the nebula's shape is more complicated than initially thought. The blue gas in a nebula's centre is actually a football-shaped structure, seen end-on that pierces the red donut-shaped material. It's certainly more beautiful than times on Earth where football and donuts are combined. Jupiter's Great Red Spot 
The Great Red Spot is a storm in Jupiter's southern hemisphere, with crimson-coloured clouds that spin counterclockwise at wind speeds that exceed those in any storm on Earth. The Great Red Spot is more than just a small blemish and has slowly changed over the years. It's currently about 1.3 times as wide as our planet. Seen through telescopes from Earth, it varies in colour from year to year, from salmon red to grey, when it may blend indistinguishably into the colouring of the surrounding cloud belts. Since 2012, the spot has become more circular and has been shrinking at a faster rate of about 580 miles per year. The source of the red colour is unknown, but suggestions range from compounds of sulphur and phosphorus to organic material, any of which could be produced by lightning discharges or by high-altitude photochemical reactions. The Eagle Nebula The Eagle Nebula, also known as Messier 16 or M16, is one of the most amazing sights that can be seen in a large telescope. In 1995, the world was amazed by the Hubble Space Telescope's beautiful images of the Eagle Nebula. It's the location of several famous structures in our galaxy, including the stunning Pillars of Creation, an active star-forming region of gas and dust. The Eagle Nebula lies in the direction of the constellation Serpens the Serpent. It's about 7,000 light-years away, and amateur astronomers can view the nebula with low-powered telescopes or with a pair of binoculars. It's definitely a sight worth seeing. You'd be able to see approximately 20 stars clearly, surrounded by gas, dust, and the light of dimmer stars. Under clear and dark viewing conditions, observers may also glimpse the nebula's famous three pillars. The Horsehead Nebula To celebrate its 23rd year, Hubble released its dramatic infrared view of the Horsehead Nebula. Also known as Barnard 33, the Horsehead Nebula sits near the star Alnitak in Orion's belt. It's made of cold gas and dust, and this dark cloud signature shape is only visible because its silhouette obscures the light from the brighter nebula behind it. The horse's jaw is actually shaped by intense radiation from a nearby star blowing on the dark cloud. The Horsehead Nebula sits a good distance from Earth, some 1,500 light years away. But in the grand scheme of things, it's about a block away. But despite this, it only shines at a magnitude of 6.8. To make matters worse, there's usually a relatively bright star in the same field of view. So through a telescope eyepiece, the horse head appears dim, small, and a bit washed out. I think we'll leave this one for Hubble to capture. The Carina Nebula The Carina Nebula formation includes the Milky Way's brightest star, WR25, in the Trumpler 16 star cluster. It is one of the largest nebulas in its class, and one of the best to study for aspiring and established astronomers due to its brightness, location and diversity. While it is very bright and large, the Carina Nebula is still not that well known because of its location, which can make it hard to locate in the night sky. Due to its brightness magnitude of 1+, it can easily be seen without needing binoculars. Eta Carinae, one of the best known stars included in the Carina Nebula, is also a very rare type of star, called a luminous hypergiant. This might sound like a character in a video game series, but in fact it's estimated to be 400 million times brighter than the Sun. Due to the level of dust and gaseous matter within the Carina Nebula, it is highly likely the nebula will give birth to even more new stars in the centuries to come. We must remember to congratulate it. The Veil Nebula The Veil Nebula first formed about 8,000 years ago, when an incredibly massive red giant star, at least 20 times the size of the Sun, exploded. Because the Veil Nebula is so enormous, and its brightness often varies depending on the activity of the cosmic dust cloud that surrounds and interacts with it, various components have been discovered and catalogued at various points in history. It has gained a vast assortment of nicknames, much more flattering than the ones you get at school, including Cygnus Loop, Cirrus Nebula, and Bridal Veil Nebula. At the very core of the Veil Nebula is a neutron star, also known as a black hole. The black hole was created when the internal collapse of the massive star sent shockwaves emanating out in all directions. Astronomers now believe that the original giant star generated such strong winds that it blew a hole right through the centre of the interstellar gases 
before the explosion even took place. When the star finally exploded, the shock waves generated by the explosion impacted this surrounding gaseous shell, which created the glow observers still see today. In fact, the shock wave is continuing to unfold at an estimated 1 million miles per hour, and you thought a Ferrari was fast. The Bubble Nebula The Bubble Nebula is seven light years across, about one and a half times the distance from our Sun to its nearest stellar neighbour, Alpha Centauri, and resides 7,100 light years from Earth in the constellation Cassiopeia. The seething star forming this nebula is 45 times more massive than our Sun. Gas on the star gets so hot that it escapes away into space as a stellar wind, moving at over 4 million miles per hour. This outflow sweeps up the cold interstellar gas in front of it, forming the outer edge of a bubble much like a snowplow piles up snow in front of it as it moves forward. As the surface of the bubble shell expands outwards, it slams into dense regions of cold gas on one side of the bubble. This asymmetry makes the star appear dramatically off-centre from the bubble. So there you have it, just a few of the best pictures ever taken by the Hubble telescope over the past 30 years. Which one is your favourite? Let us know in the comments and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then give us a subscribe. Thanks for watching.